uh, do not feel obligated to use the entire time. Um, the more precise your answer, the more questions we will be able to address. Um, and candidates, if you need to have a question repeated, just ask and I'll kindly do that. To ensure fairness, we have predetermined with the candidates who will receive the first question and in what order each will follow. Subsequent questions, that's for the first question, and then subsequent questions will be asked in a varied order so that the candidates will not consistently follow the same speaker. Toward the end of the forum, each candidate will be provided two minutes for a closing statement. So now let's meet the candidates in alphabetical order. Um, Lucia Gutierrez, no. Eve Marie Little, Howdy. and Renu Mohotra. Thank you. So let's begin. Um, each candidate will have up to one and a half minutes to answer. And the first question goes to Renu. And it is, why are you seeking the office of city council member, and what qualifies you to serve? I will use first 10 seconds. I know I only have 90 seconds, but I'll use 10 seconds to thank you all first for being here, because that gives me double the energy to present my views here. So thank you. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I have lived in New York City for 20 years, this wonderful city that I call my home. And that's precisely the reason that's motivating me to run for city council. I don't have answers to all the problems you might have, but I want to be a part of the solutions. And I love this community. It's my love for this community, my professional background in technology and entrepreneurship, and my belief that when we come together and we have a positive mindset, we can drive positive change. That makes me believe that I can be a good candidate and I can help drive the solutions to the problems that the city has by the uh, side of all of you residents here. I've built a long career in technology and entrepreneurship. I have been successful in driving projects at big companies like Broadcom, Oracle Corporation, and I have had these significant achievements. But most of all, I have felt satisfied and gratified when I have given back to the community. And that's what is motivating me to now look at the problems at the next level, the same strategic planning, team collaboration, and solving of complex problems capabilities that I have used for my professional work, I want to bring to the city administration for the city policy. And I want your support. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the same question goes to Lucia. Thank you, and thank you for the question, and thank you for everybody for being here today. Um, one of the reasons why, uh, the main reason why I am running for city council is that I have been involved in my community for a uh, very long time, for many years now. I've been, um, I was raised in Newark and for, and as I was raised here working in the community center, I was always helping, um, especially the youth. I was always mentoring them, always providing them an avenue to make sure that they pursued a higher education. I continue to do that um, and as my career expanded and most recently what I've been doing is working with my community, especially Spanish speaking communities, to help them navigate the system of what it is that was, <clears throat> that is a school board, what it is that is um, that is uh, city council, and really helping them with any need. So as my work with my community expanded, I, uh, I just, I felt that the next step in, in my activities was to do city council. And I want to continue volunteering with, and helping my community. And I just felt that it was the right time to pursue this, this um, avenue in order to provide a voice and be able to uh, be a lens for, uh, provide a different lens for our community, which includes a lens of, inc a lens of inclusion for our young, our young community members, as well um, as expand the reach for um, our new community members that are moving into Newark. And I think it's important that we take the family as a whole and really provide a well um, quality of life for all, all our, our residents and, and that's my main goal for wanting to pursue this. Thank you. And uh, the same question, uh, now we'll go to Eve. Um, so, so first of all, thank you so much. I agree with all of them. Thank you so much for organizing this. As someone who is a professional event planner, this is not easy to do. So thank you guys so much for organizing all of this. 
Um, as to your question, why am I taking this position? You know, I'm running for city council because the big thing is I'm someone who cares. I have a passion for our community and I have a passion for helping people. I actually am a college professor and I teach hospitality, recreation, and tourism at California State University. I also work at Mission College in the hospitality and culinary industry. And I also work at Elmwood Correction Facility teaching male inmates college courses. And what it is, it's a vocation to kind of help them not only finish their time, excuse me, while they're in jail, but also an opportunity for them to be able to give them skills that they need so they can do good things once they get released and we can give them vocations and help them out and things of that sort. So my passion is the hospitality industry. My passion is kindness towards others. And my passion is service to people and helping others. Now, what do I bring to the table? I am an incredible event planner. I'm incredible at getting things done. I'm great at organizing things. I'm amazing at project management. Thank you. The second question I will read in a moment. And um, uh, Lucia will be the <clears throat> first one to answer this. As a short-term City of New York Council member, what do you plan to accomplish in two years or less? Most definitely. Two years sounds like it's a short time, but a lot can get accomplished. And so what some of the things that I seek to accomplish is to continue the goals of our current City Council. There are a few plans already um, in play, so one of the things that I seek to is to continue that work to make sure that um, the, the existing plans do come to fruition. And making sure that I'm able to expand on that. Uh, we currently have uh, a plan for our parks and, and recs, um, and so being able to provide that, um, being able to continue with that plan, but also providing the, the lens of equity and inclusivity, I think I'll be able to bring that. And so continuing those plans, but expanding them. So um, what I, I think that, as mentioned, short uh, two years seems short, but there's actually a lot that can get done because there's a lot of plans for our city already in place. So I plan to bring forward collaboration um, uh, and, and um, a system of collaboration with the fellow council members to make sure that we continue the vision of Newark and be able to accomplish the goals that are currently in play and even expand on that as we continue. Thank you. Same question, and uh, this will go to Eve. So the answer to your question of what I plan to do in the two years is one of the biggest things I want to do is I want to do better communication with our city. As I've been talking to a lot of our citizens here, Newark has a lot of great stuff that we're doing here. We plan a lot of great stuff. We have the other Los Muertos coming up. We have a lot of different things that are going on, but there isn't that great communication. People don't know what's going on. And as someone who puts together a lot of these events, it's kind of disappointing when we have a low head count just because of the lack of communication. So that is one of the things, even though two years is a shorter amount of time, that's something I would definitely want to do. The second most important thing to me that I really want to focus on is helping bridge the, the, the relationship between the city of Newark and the school district. You know, I come into this position finding out that there's a lot of turmoil, it's been a lot of problems within the school district and a lot of problems with that connection. And one of my biggest things is, I'm empathetic, I'm kind, I'm a nice person, and I want to be the person that shows up almost like Switzerland. I want to be there with my little flag and go, hey, how can we fix the problems? I have no beef with anyone. I don't, I'm a teacher, I'm a mom, how can we fix this? How can we be there? And I want to be one that has no negativity towards anyone. I want to have no history, no bad past or anything, but I want to be there and be able to fix it and help bring us all together as one community, which is the city of Newark and also to help the kids, because at the end of the day, we need to focus on making sure the kids and all the citizens can all call this a home. Thank you. Same question, and uh, Renew. My slogan, my campaign slogan has been, Renew to Renew. And that's precisely the mindset that I'm coming with. Nothing is, uh, in my opinion, earth shattering as far as our city is concerned. The citizens here, the residents here seem happy but I want to renew the way we have been doing things. And by renewing, I mean changing the pace at which we drive development in this city. My priorities in office would be public safety, affordable housing, and modernization of the infrastructure. And when I talk about these three priorities, these are pressing problems. So from that standpoint, we cannot afford to wait for two years to make the difference. Two years is a long time, in my opinion to be able to make decisions and to drive the change. And from the world I come in, two years is a lifetime, honestly. 
we have been talking about AI solutions. I'm sure everybody uh, in all living rooms today, in all hallway conversations, is talking about how AI is revolutionizing the world. And if in this day and age, we think we don't have enough time to make the change, if we have two years, then we must be rethinking. So I intend driving the changes in these three priority areas that I listed. And for certain things, such as climate change related initiatives, I understand this might not be enough time, but we can lay the right foundation. And that's what I intend doing. Thank you. So I'm going to take a uh, question that's been submitted from the audience. And um, this will go to uh, Lucia to begin with. The question is, Newark has limited development space and no available land to annex. What is your vision for future development and how it relates to preserving a small town atmosphere and traffic? Well, Stephanie, thank you for the question. Um, I think one of the key uh, things that you mentioned is keeping the small town feel and for, um, preserving the small town feel. This is one of the, the great things about Newark. Um, one of the great things that I love and uh, that I had uh, being raised here, it is being able to know your neighbor, know your community, uh, go to school with friends that you later uh, see, uh, you know, become city, <laughs> city managers. <laughs> so it, it's a great community that we have. And in order to be able to preserve all that, it's important to make sure that we have um, adequate housing for our, our residents. And um, one of the most uh, important uh, initiatives that needs to come from city council, and I know that they already have the vision and, and the perspective for that, is affordable housing. But um, as mentioned, land is, is a limited resource. And I think one of the things that we can do in order to be able to expand and develop in Newark and not inhibit into um, areas that are, are uh, that are preserved and, and we should continue to preserve is to actually partner up with some of the um, some of the local organizations. Um, I, I've said this multiple times, but expanding our partnership with uh, the New York School Board, they do have some available land, and when we partner up with them, it it actually can um, create a, a wonderful a wonderful new community where we can look into uh, uh, teacher housing and also housing for the community. So uh, I think that we do have the, uh, the resources to be able to expand, to continue to develop without jeopardizing our environment and really partnering up with um, other community. Thank you. Uh, same question for Renu. So um, I would agree with um, Lucia here in saying that we have land. And in my opinion, we need to use that land wisely. And when I say wisely, one of the organizations and their mission and charter I've been following is Green Belt Alliance. And if I look at what they have been proposing in terms of how the buildings should be constructed, how we can still preserve open spaces, we are actually going to be kind to the residents of this city as well as to the nature, to the climate. And one of the other philosophies that they follow is how being a part of the nature, and I'm a mother, I'm a mother of two kids, uh, one of the things I remind myself is the way I can teach my kids to be a part of this bigger world is by connecting them with nature. And I believe it, the same is true for all the people around here, the kids who are growing here. And for them, we have to preserve nature as well. So teaching them how to live in nature while at the same time honoring the needs of the growing population and the growing uh, businesses of this city. We need to be thinking about modernizing the way we zone, the way we construct, and the way we allow for development. And that's really how I intend doing partnering with local organizations, looking at progressive ways of doing things, and enabling businesses and residents to have the quality of the life they deserve. OK, the same question for Eve. You know, I, I I think one of the things that we're so blessed that we have everybody here, and I'm, I'm so glad that we have this opportunity because these are great ideas. Honestly, these are great things, and being able to all work together and have a great conversation at the end of the day, it's the city that wins. You know, I think a lot of key people keep saying affordable housing, affordable housing, affordable housing. I think one of the areas that we need to look at is responsible housing. I think we've got some people putting up cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste really quick houses, and they're running off with their $1.2 million houses, you know when they run, then we're not looking at the infrastructure here. We're not looking how the building matters. We're not looking at, 
You know, are we taking care of our police force? Are we taking care of our infrastructure? These are things that we have to consider. So I really do think it shouldn't be affordable housing, the only thing we're looking at, but affordable building, excuse me, um, responsible building and looking at things correctly. Also, I think we need to look at the mall. I mean, we have to look at it. It's changing. Things have changed. And we need to see this opportunity as the land. Possibly could we turn it into something else? It's not just the mall situation. It's all malls across the United States. There are changes that are happening. Things are different these days. So we need to take a look at this location, at this land. Can we turn it into something better? Can we turn it into something to make this community better? Maybe a venue location. Maybe we could turn it into something fun like that. But these are things we have to look at. Also, last but not least, the warehouses. We have a huge empty warehouse. We are limited on space, but we have a huge area where there are a lot of warehouses. Can we possibly utilize that space best? So we have to look at everything and be able to make decisions from there. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to another question, and uh, Eve, you will be the first to address this one. As a council member, how will you specifically retain local businesses and attract new ones? Well, I asked you a question about retaining local businesses and attracting new ones. Once again, I think we need to look at the space that we have in Newark. When you're talking about businesses, we're looking at for space. And not only space, we're looking at affordable space. So we have to consider looking at all the warehouse area that we have. Can we possibly, we have tons of empty warehouses. We have tons of empty space. Could we possibly turn that space into an affordable location where businesses can? Could we possibly do tax incentives? Could we possibly do something like that? I'm not 100% sure, but I think we need to look at what we currently have available. And a lot of stuff that we have is vacant. A lot of shopping centers and little areas have vacant space. Could we reach out to those owners and could we say to them, hey, would you be willing to take, maybe you want $20,000 in rent, but right now you're making zero. So could we possibly talk about doing it at a reduced rate so that A, the business that wants to come in can win, B, the person, the property owner can bring in some money, and C, the city of Newark can bring in some more tax money, and at the end of the day, everybody wins. Okay, thank you. Uh, Renew, same question. I'll answer it in a very logical way. I'll take a science-backed uh, uh, approach to answering this question. And that being... Why would businesses want to continue doing business here or would want to grow their business here if we can provide them more business, right? And who can provide them more business? It's the residents here. And why would residents here be happy if they have the right quality of life? So instead of answering what are the kind of incentives I would offer to businesses, I would think from the perspective of how would the residents be happy here? Of course, infrastructure is a table stake. We need right level of infrastructure, be it parks, streets, traffic lights, or whatever else might be needed for the businesses and residents to have a good living. But what will it make more attractive for residents to continue to be in the city, not have to send their kids to other school districts for schools, or not have to go look for services outside of the city? And if we can answer that question, that's when we keep our residents more ingrained in doing business with the local businesses here. And that's what is going to be an incentive for the businesses to invest more, to grow more here. As far as new businesses are concerned, I would definitely want to partner with organizations, do more outreach, and uh, sell more. How Network is a great place to do business. Okay, and uh, Lucia? You mind repeating the question? <laughs> no, not at all. As a council member, how will you specifically retain local businesses and attract new ones? Thank you. Um, I think one of the things that is important in order to support our businesses is to partner up with uh, uh, other organizations such as the state and the county. In order to be able to really support our, our businesses, we should look at things such as programs or grants or low interest uh, loans that, be, that will be able to provide an incentive for our, community, for our business, businesses to come here. But uh, I know that it's also um, difficult without partnering up with organizations such as the state and such as the county. So we need to be able to um, partner with them and be, and be able to leverage their resources. Additionally, I think we can support our small our businesses by organizing community events that sponsor all the businesses that we have in Newark. 
and really just expand the uh, the reach to the community to the, so that they can be aware of the businesses that we have and really just uh, be able to give uh, the local businesses an opportunity for them to be to be highlighted and this this is a win-win for everybody we have events that will um, help our engage our community and help our local businesses and I, additionally I think what I could do is also work with our city manager and our staff our, our city staff in order to make sure that our proper procedures are in place to help um, facilitate and streamline things like accessing uh, permits and license to make sure that we uh, that we have the optimal procedures in place to be able to maximize this. And once we do that, also be able to expand in the line of communication between businesses and the city. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll move on to our uh, next round of questions. And um, uh, Renu, this will go to you initially. What will you do to add to the quality of community of our town, such as parks and maintenance and homeless programs? I'll answer it in um, three parts. Uh, first, you asked parks, second, uh, homelessness, and uh, if I may ask, what was the third uh, aspect? Parks and maintenance and homeless programs. Okay. So, uh, and the third one being maintenance, and in this category I would put services, be it our fire services, police services, or anything else that helps improve the quality of life of the residents. So as far as parks is concerned, I would put it as our basic infrastructure enhancements that the city requires. And if I go back to what I listed earlier as my three priorities when I get in the office, I talked about public safety, affordability of housing and um, the modernization of infrastructure. So this, of course, is one of the top priorities. And when I say modernization of parks, it's upgrading the basic equipment that is needed in the parks. And at the same time, making it such that we make it state of the class, not just for the residents of the city, but also allow for other people, the visitors from other cities and our guests to enjoy those services. and. This is important for me because I see a lot of residents in the city who actually go out to avail of these kinds of services. I want to keep the residents here. As far as maintenance services are concerned, of course, uh, careful consideration of the budget and where the gaps are along with community input would be important. And unfortunately, I don't have time to address this. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, Lucia, the same question. Thank you. Um, so, as as uh, so, what would I do to improve the um, help the quality the quality of life um, as it pertains to parks? I think it's important to, um, as mentioned, continue with the plan that the city uh, currently has in place, but be able to expand it to make sure that we are that 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 th those plans are inclusive of all our residents, including um, residents with uh, various type of abilities. So, making sure that that we have playgrounds, uh, resources, exercise activities. Um, really just making sure that our parks are all inclusive and, and are being utilized and maximized by all of our residents. That will definitely improve the quality of life because that will um, be able to have uh, community gatherings in, in these areas. Additionally, with regards to maintenance, I think we need to continue with the expansion of what the city is currently doing. There is uh, already a plan to re uh, repave our streets. That, that's key. Uh, I'm glad that that, that that plan is currently in play. It's important that we have uh, adequate streets in order to protect our, our, our vehicles, as well as making sure that um, our, our pedestrians and our bike riders have a safe path for them to, to continue on. So it would be definitely expanding on that, maintenance, um, that kind of maintenance, making sure that infrastructure of our city is adequate. Uh, with, regard, with regards to homelessness, this is where I would partner up with um, the county and the state. The city alone does not have all the resources to be able to um, aid in homelessness. Sorry, homelessness. So um, being able to partner up with the county and it will be able to bring more resources. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question, oh, I'm sorry, did I? No, Eve, I'm sorry. 
I would love to answer this yes. one. <laughs> okay, you made me feel so little. <laughs> so um, what I wanted to talk about was the quality of life that we discussed in our community, and there's three main topics that we discussed. And it was maintenance, parks, and homelessness. And of course, maintenance is a very big part of it. We definitely want to take it a stitch in time since dying. We want to make sure to stay on top of it. I recently had my road repaved last week and I was very appreciative of it. It was looked very, very nice. And it is the upkeep of it. We want to make sure to keep an eye on it and it's very, very important to keep an eye and just make sure things are good to go. Secondly, having to do with the parks, that's where I shine. I teach parks and recreation at the university and a lot of it is maintenance, but also being aware of what people want in parks. And the more things that I've been doing, talking and walking and discussing it with people, people definitely want to have parks that are appealing to them. And also, our parks are a little bit dated, but we also need to be aware of the budget. Parks are not cheap to put in. Parks cost a lot of money. So we need to make sure that we are aware of what we want to do and we have to make sure to put it in the budget, the maintenance of the parks and recreation and be aware of what needs to get done. I think it would be wise to do possibly like a survey or reach out to our residents here and find out which parks are A, the ones that are most demand, but also ask what parks need to be redone. And as was mentioned earlier, we want to make sure parks where everyone is included, and that's important. And of course, homelessness, this is a tricky subject. This is very, very difficult. And a lot of this is going to be finding the information, finding what they need, and what we can do to build and help these individuals. But there are a lot of things that we can and cannot help, but most of all, being aware of what we can and cannot do. Thank you. Um, next rounds of questions, next round of questions, and uh, Lucia, this will come to you initially. Newark may be susceptible to sea level rise and flooding in the coming years. A particular concern is further development along the Newark shoreline. How should the City Council address these current and future concerns? Most Thank you, most definitely. Um, thank you for the question. Um, as regards to the city council and how they should address this, it is important to make sure that the uh, city council has a really holistic uh, view of uh, data coming towards them. So we need to make sure that we um, have comprehensive data that is evaluating the uh, the effects of climate change, that is affecting, that is um, evaluating the effects of the sea rising, and really take that in, into consideration with the partnership. But what are the needs of our city? Once we are able to, to have a full picture, then it really just provides, um, it, it's gonna provide a, a better educated uh, uh, resources uh, and, and notion for our city as to how to proceed. Uh, we need, the city is already doing this by partnering up with, um, with um, envir environmentalist groups that are providing. I, I was very, uh, we're very thankful with the community um, meeting that happened last week. We were able to learn a lot about what the city is doing right now, which is great. Um, it, they mentioned that the city is step um, getting ahead of this, making sure that we are looking 100 years out to know what are the effects of climate change and sea level rising. So it, I will be continuing those, um, that work that the city is currently doing and really evaluating the needs of our residents to make sure that we can properly expand and develop but without jeopardizing the environment. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Same question uh, goes to Eve. So, so the question was, we were talking about the situation right now with the shoreline and also climate change and stuff like that. First of all, honestly, I'm glad we're talking about it. It's like the elephant in the room. You know, it is kind of scary and we are literally right on the water. So this is very important that we're talking about this. And the thing is, we have to talk about, once again, as I mentioned earlier, responsible building and responsible housing. And this is back to the whole thing with the situation on the group that wants to build in the wetlands. Guys, it's not smart. We shouldn't be doing that. We have to be aware of that. Why are we going to build in an area that's already wet? We need to focus on being aware of what's happening, what's going to be rising. We have to be aware of it and we have to be responsible with it and make the decisions on responsible housing to make sure we can adapt to that. So we have to sit down, we have to look at the data, but most of all, I'm just happy that we're looking at this stuff and we're continuing to examine this for the future and make sure we have some ideas of what we can do for our children and our children's children. Thank you. Uh, Renu? Um, when we talk about big problems like the effects of climate change, um, these are problems that nobody really knows how they are going to pan out. Even when 
environmentalists or the climate conscious people make some projections. Those are really extrapolations. So what really would help here is data. Data is going to be the king in this case. And along with data, a holistic approach to how these problems have to be looked at. When we are talking about sea level rise, it's not happening today, it's not happening tomorrow. We know it's imminent. It'll take several years before we start to see the change. So instead of rushing into and making any choices, I would like to take a step back, look at what the development proposals are, and look at what those projections tell us about the future of this area. And at the same time, as I indicated earlier, uh, on one hand, it's our responsibility to the residents of this city or the new people who we want to invite to this city. It's also our responsibility towards the climate. If we are talking about constructing on wetlands, we are talking about disrupting the ecosystem of this place. We are not only putting the development in those areas at risk, we are putting others in the nearby areas also at risk by inviting more flood, by inviting the inability for our wetlands to do the absorption. So we have to look at it holistically, and I won't rush into it, but take a more data-based holistic approach. Thank you. Um, I'm going to um, have another question from the audience, and um, Lucia, this will come to you first. What do you feel is the role of the city and its relationship with the school district? Uh, thank you for the question. I, I was a previous school board member, and so I think the relationship with the city and the school board is very important to have a partnership with. Um, I, I, um, the way I see it, we do support the, the same community, we support the children. And though we have different um, avenues and resources to support uh, our community members, I think it's important to have a partnership with them. Why? Because uh, as we continue and expand that partnership, we can supplement each other with resources that the other one can't, can't support. So for example, uh, when I was actually uh, working at the rec center at a young age, we had an after school program uh, at the Silliman Center where we provided a safe space for the students to do homework. So we're not supplementing, I'm sorry, we're not um, taking over uh, the tutoring or the homework, but we're providing the space for it. So I think that that's the kind of resources that we can, the partnership that we can have, is that we can um, continue to, uh, to support each other, support the students, to make sure that they, are, they have a safe place within our city, and also the district is providing the education that the students need. Uh, uh, the partnership um, can continue and expand with the city council, uh, with the meetings such as uh, the liaison committee meetings. So those are a great avenue to uh, to start that partnership and it expands outside where we have events um, like the swim, uh, swim night that is uh, currently happening where it's an exclusive event for our NUSD students. So I think that kind of partnership is the, uh, um, something that we can expand on. Thank you. Uh, Renu, same question. Um. I'll start by making a statement here, which, is, which could be my opinion, which could be my understanding, and that is in the past, our school board and the city council have not worked as collaboratively. And I don't know all the reasons, and that's not even the point I would want to get into here. But in my opinion, the relationship has to be just the opposite. They need to be working hand in hand, and it needs to be a very cohesive relationship. Because when it comes to our children, which is what the school board is primarily supposed to be making decisions for, that really defines everything for the residents, especially the ones that have kids or the ones that who care for kids in the community. It practically defines everything in terms of the quality of life for the residents of the city. So while it might be school board's responsibility to make good choices as far as schools are concerned, but if we look at it, those school choices are going to impact the quality of life and the choice of life for the residents of the city. So it is as important a topic for school board as it should be for the city council. When we talk about schools, literally, if anything separates Newark from being the Palo Alto of tomorrow, other than Stanford, it is the schools. So it's very, very important, not just for the school board, but for the city council also to be making schools a top priority and work collaboratively with the school board. Okay. Same question to Eve. 
So I, I, I absolutely love everything you said. I completely agree with everything Renu said, and it is so incredibly important. And I honestly think this is the elephant in the room. And I'm going to straight up open it. And I think the biggest thing we need to focus on is building a relationship between the Newark School District and the city of Newark. It is so important. There's been some bad leaders in the past. There's been some bad situations. It's over. Stop. Let's move forward. Let's work together. Because at the end of the day, we have to offer children a place to work and learn, and we have to offer them a place to play. The schools offer the working part, and we offer the playing part. And we have to remember, at the end of the day, between all this riffraff and all this fighting and all this situation going on, who's the loser here? Who's the one getting hurt? It's the kids. So how can we be asking our city to please bring in more housing, but we have a declining enrollment in schools? Why are kids going to different schools? Why are kids going to private schools? We need to be there as the city and be there to support the schools and say, hey, let's heal the problems, let's work together as a team, and let's focus on the kids. If we're going to be here to help kids, we have to focus and be available to them. And that's where I told you, and I'm going to mention it again, I'm a mother, I'm a teacher, I have no beef with anybody. I want to be the leader, I want to be the one that comes up with my little white flag and I want to help build the bridge and help us all move forward for the good and safety and well-being of our children. Okay, we are getting to the final question round and um, let's see, the first um, answer will come from Eve and the question is, are you in favor of ballot measure LL, which increases the hotel tax? And if so, what are the best uses for the additional revenue? I am so happy you asked me this question. <laughs> As a hospitality professor in hotels and restaurants, this question is perfect. I am 100% behind, behind, I'm actually against taxes. I don't like them, I'm not a fan of them, but I completely support this one. And the reason I support this one is these are people who are coming in from out of town. They're, and the way, majority of them are not paying for it. It's Silicon Valley. They're going to be the one paying for it. So the increase from 10% to 14%, you're talking 14, you're talking four, six dollars more. I mean, these Silicon Valleys are giving these people two, three hundred dollars just to buy food and go out to eat. Trust me, this is not going to affect them. But the forecast of this measure is going to bring in 2.1 to 2.2 million dollars a year. And honestly, what did we talk about? Our improvements in our infrastructure. We talked about fixing our roads, making sure to take care of it. We have to work on our infrastructure for our city so that we can bring in responsible housing, so that we can provide better things for our kids, so that we can provide and upgrade our parks. This should be in the operational funds, not salaries, nothing of that sort, but operational and improvements and maintenance. But at the end of the day, this is money that doesn't affect our pockets. People that are coming in from out of town, they're not going to matter that amount of money. And these Silicon Valleys, they're used to paying it. So I'm actually 100% behind it. All right. Same question to Renu. As Eve was speaking, I was thinking, what more will I add to this? Because that's exactly how I think. I am in support of this ballot measure, and I also don't think it's going to be a significant increase in taxes for the visitors here. In addition to that revenue that comes in from this uh, increased tax investment in infrastructure, I would also like to allocate, so this is a little creative twist from me, I would like to evaluate if we can uh, maybe take a part of this additional revenue and reinvest back to make our city more attractive for tourism. So it's like positive feeds into positive, create that positive virtuous cycle. So by getting those additional taxes, while we make good use of it for improving our infrastructure, we also find a way to feed it back in terms of making the city more attractive for tourists so that in the future we are able to not just make 2.2 billion in annual revenues, but more from that and we can do more with all of that. And uh, the same question to Lucia. Thank you. I definitely do support it and have been campaigning in favor of, of Measure LL as well um, as I walk in the neighborhoods. So 
Um, I definitely do support it because I think it's important that the resources that do come in from this measure will be able to enhance the services of our community members. We'll be able to, um, they'll be able to, um, they will be utilized for public safety, for parks, for um, programs to help uh, our, our residents. So I am definitely in favor of utilizing the, the resources, resources for that. Um, additionally, I think that the funds from this measure will be able to support our facilities and really be able to maintain our infrastructure, which is very important. And one of the key initiatives that has been discussed is really being able to support the facility, facilities of our first responders. It's important that, uh, specifically with uh, two stations, I know that they, they are fairly out of date, so being able to really support our first responders to make sure that they're able to support us and provide our residents with well quality safe environment so being able to uh, have these the, these new funds to be to support our community in that way really would just improve the the quality of life for all our residents we need to make sure at least with our first responders that they do have state of the art facilities so that they are able to provide the resources that us um, the community members need um, in case of emergency so definitely in favor and i'm continuing to advocate for it thank you okay well thank you all uh, so we're at the uh, closing statement. You told me you need to speak to me for a second. Oh, please, okay. please continue. Well, you, you're not the first to have a closing <laughs> statement, so please come back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought there was a, this was, do you have a closing statement? Yes. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. After you're done, if you wouldn't mind stepping outside. Uh, this isn't an opportune time for that. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, a two-minute closing statement from each, and uh, it so happens that uh, Renu, you're leading off. First and foremost, uh, thank you all for being here, giving me an opportunity to share my views, and uh, for you all to have the data to make your objective choices for what this city council should look like going forward. As I'm looking at uh, the landscape today, it's been an interesting year in the history of network with the number of candidates who are running for elections this year. So in my opinion, literally it's in the hands of the residents to decide the fate of this city, bringing in whoever you think would be right in terms of making those right choices, informed choices, and advancing our city, which is due. As far as I'm concerned, I'm truly humbled, even by this opportunity, to think that I will serve this community, a place, a city which I have called home for 20 years. My kids are born here, they are growing up here, and I truly, whether as a city council officer or somebody supporting the city council as a true champion, would like to see this city thrive and prosper and bring my insights as I have been thinking in terms of how we need to renew the city, whether it's in terms of technological innovation, in terms of modernizing the way we run business here, or in terms of how we drive community initiatives. And if I have that opportunity to do firsthand, I'll be grateful. And at the same time, as I mentioned earlier, my background in science and technology, the experience I have gathered in professional settings to drive big teams, to drive large operations, drive efficiency in the way we run our businesses, and now in this case, the city business. I would love to drive all of those aspects in this environment, and at the same time, with the community initiatives that I have been driving, they have given me enough confidence to believe if we have the right mindset and right people, we can make great things happen. So thank you for your support and this opportunity. Okay, um, Eve, you're actually up for your closing statement right now. He says I need it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I guess we'll have a short pause. Fortunately, we have a little bit of time for that. I can keep talking if you want to do something. Do we have any announcements? October 12th? Yes. October 12th, Saturday morning, 10 a.m. at the Niles Discovery Church. There will be a presentation of the state ballot propositions, uh, pros and cons. And we have a great team that's been studying it and 
gone in depth to learn about it, and so we expect uh, a, a good opportunity for you folks to attend Niles Discovery Center on Niles Boulevard, Saturday, Saturday October 12th. Can I ask a question? If no. people can't make it to the 12th, will that be available in any form of the taping of it? We're attempting to record it, so to put it on our website. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Eve, we're ready for your two-minute closing statement. All right, how about them apples? Okay, so um, first of all, I would like to say a huge thank you to Newark First Responders. I just found out my son accidentally caused the house to catch on fire, and there are currently Newark individuals there, first responders there, so hurrah to them, right? Thank you so much. So after this, I'm headed home immediately. But I just wanted to say, my big thing is, and the reason I stayed, and I want to make sure it's very, very clear, we have a lot of candidates. And honestly, we've got some really good candidates out there. And what I'm asking you is Google your candidates, find out information, find out who they are. But on top of everything else, when you're voting, look for a person's characteristics and look at for one person's who they are. Are they nice to people? Are they friendly? Are they communicative? And one of the things where I shine is I am hospitable. It's what I do. I care about people and I treat the janitor the same as I do the superintendent. And I've always been that way and I will always be that way. And as if, if I'm humble enough to have a position for city council, I will always be approachable. I will always be there. I will happily listen to anyone who wants to talk. And I want to be a servant to our community. I don't want to show up with a big fancy name and a fancy title, but rather I want to see how can I be of service? How can I help you? And one of the biggest things is, a lot of people don't know, is I'm actually half Hispanic. My mother is from Guadalajara, Jalisco. That's Guadalajara, Jalisco in English. And I really, really, and I grew up speaking English and Spanish. I'm fluent in both language. Miss Sheila wouldn't let me put my full name on the ballot. It's Eve Marie Little de Chavez de Santa Barbara de las Padilla. She said it was too long and she told me to quote, keep it little. So I did, I mean, kept it Eve Marie Little. So my big thing is look for someone that has kindness. Look for someone who is empathetic. And for at the end of the day, Look for someone who is kind for all, because kindness spreads. Kindness is who we are, and we need to continue being a kind and wonderful Newark that we are. And I'm heading out. <laughs> okay, well, you are officially excused. But <laughs> so um, on behalf of the League of Women Voters, I want to thank you. Hey. Oh, thank you. Lucia, Lucia. I bet you have a longer name. I do, I do. Uh, I right. beg your pardon. I'm so sorry. Lucia, your closing statement. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you for your time and for this incredible opportunity. I am running for the uh, city council for the short term, term seat, and I am excited for this opportunity. I have been deeply involved in my community for many years, driven by passion and nurturing the future of our youth ensuring the safety of our neighborhoods, and fostering a spirit of giving back to my hometown. Over a year now, I have conducted weekly mentoring sessions with Spanish-speaking parents, helping them navigate the complexities of the school district and city council functions. And I will continue to always be available to answer their questions and assist them in understanding the systems. Additionally, I serve on the board of two nonprofit organizations that provide scholarships for students. I am an active member of Newark Rotary, and I have previously served as a school board member. My extensive community involvement has naturally led me to seek this role with City Council, where I can further support my community and their needs. I want to acknowledge the hard work of our current council and express my hope to be able to bring a fresh perspective to Newark. My, fo my focus will be in promoting inclusiveness in youth activities, continuing to support our local businesses, and assist in public safety. And additionally, I also think it's important to, um, I plan on addressing the critical issues of affordable housing for our families. I was raised in Newark and I had the opportunity of volunteering for many years within my community, which has allowed me to partner with organizations such as Alameda County um, Department of Public Health, our National School District, and our local representatives. As a council member, I intend to continue these partnerships by bringing valuable resources to our residents. As well, I understand the responsibilities of local representation, and I am familiar with Brown Act rules of procedure, governance, and policy. 
I believe that my experience and unwavering passion for my community and community service will make me an ideal candidate for city council. I look forward for the opportunity to represent Newark as an elected council member. Thank you. Well, on behalf of the League of Women Voters, I want to thank each of you, all three of you, uh, for your participation tonight and for your willingness to run for public office, serve your community, and make a difference. Um, we want to be sure that all voters know about the League's voter information website, which is vote411.org, V-O-T-E-411.org. This award-winning voting election uh, resource provides reliable nonpartisan inf information in both English and Spanish, including candidates' guides, voter registration and verification, details about your unique ballot, and how to vote in your state. In 2020, more than 6 million people came to vote for 11 for election information on over 22,000 national or nationwide elections. Thanks to this audience for watching this forum, for being here. Please remind your family and friends to vote no later than November 5th. Thank you. So I'll add that we have uh, the second forum, uh, which is for uh, city council candidates running for four-year terms. Um, and we will start in about 15 minutes. So if there are candidates on that um, uh, forum, I'd like to uh, meet with you uh, briefly, um, and we'll make sure you have places up on the dais. Thank you. Welcome to this forum for candidates running for election to Newark City Council. There are two seats open for four-year terms. This forum is sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Fremont, Newark, and Union City. I am Dave Fishbaugh. I'm a member of the League, and I'm your moderator. The League of Women Voters promotes political responsibility through informed and active participation of citizens in government. The League is nonpartisan, but we are political. We study issues that have potential governmental solutions and develop consensus positions. Once we have developed a position as an organization, we take action for positive change. However, and this is important, we never support or oppose any political party or candidate. We present this forum as a service to voters. Here are the ground rules. Before this forum, we collected questions from the community and league members. We will also take questions from this forum's audience, thus the three by five cards that will be collected uh, shortly. Time constraints rarely allow us <clears throat> to ask every question submitted, so League volunteers will evaluate audience submissions to ensure that we can ask the most pertinent questions and cover a variety of issues. Other, well, another League member <laughs> is serving as our timekeeper, um, and uh, the candidates already know that the yellow card when raised signals that you have 15 seconds left and uh, red means that your time is up. Um, each candidate will have up to one and one half minutes to answer a question. Do not feel obligated to use the entire time provided. The more precise your answer, the more questions we will be able to address. And candidates, if if you need me to repeat a question, please just raise your hand or ask. We do that. To ensure fairness, we have predetermined with the candidates who will receive the first question and in what order each will follow. Subsequent questions will be asked in a varied order so that candidates will not consistently follow the same speaker. Toward the end of the forum, each candidate will be provided two minutes for a closing statement. Now, 
let's meet the candidates. In alphabetical order, we have Jacinta Arteaga, Julie Del Cantancio, and Terence Grindall. Thank you, so let's begin. And as I said, each candidate will have up to uh, 90 seconds to answer. And the first question, which will go to Julie, is why are you seeking to serve four years on the New York City Council, and what qualifies you to serve? Thank you. Good evening, New York. I'm Julie Del Catancho, and I am running for New York City Council for four years. As a New York Planning Commissioner, I hear the pride of our community when we support our recreation. As a Newark educator, I hear the determination of our families when we support our youth. And as a Newark neighborhood watch captain, I hear the voices of our renters and homeowners when we say we want a safe Newark. I plan to protect Newark. My focus is safety, economic responsibility, and community engagement. I'm a union worker endorsed by the Teamsters. I grew up in the area with my veteran grandpa in the home. He was a California farmer when World War II broke out, and he enlisted in the Army and served for 25 years. I guess my point is that making seniors a priority holds a special place in my heart. I met my husband, Jeff, on middle school field trip as kids. We became prom dates. We became seeds who settled back in Newark 20 years ago and grew strong roots. Our child attends Newark Memorial High School. This small town is home to people obtaining big dreams. I have a Juris Doctor degree. I have a Master's degree, a Bachelor's degree, and a thesis published at UC Berkeley. I earned the Presidential Gold Medal Award for Public Service in 2023. The bottom line is I'm well prepared to take on the challenge of being City Council. Thank you. Um... Terrence, the same question. Oh, thank you. Is the microphone on? I think it is. <laughs> Here comes Sheila. <laughs> I think it's on now. Yes, great. Mm -hmm. um, sorry about that. Um, my name is Terrence Grindall. I'm a, I'm a longtime Newark resident, and I'm dedicated to our community. I have 34 years of experience in city planning and city management, including 13 years working as an executive for the city of Newark. I'm a former Newark, um, elected Newark school board member, and I've served as president of the Newark Rotary Club, the Newark Optimist Club, and the Newark Educational Foundation. I've been, an active, I've been an active participant in our community for almost 20 years. I'm the only candidate in this race with experience as an elected official or with city management. I have balanced budgets, worked to improve our, our parks, helped build affordable housing, and, and, and to bring businesses like Costco, Facebook, Lucid, and many restaurants and hotels to Newark. I don't just talk about such things, I've done them. I look forward to, to, the, to the product, this productive discussion. Thank you. Hasita, mm -hmm. um, same question. Hello. First of all, I want to just thank um, the League of Women Voters for hosting today's event. Uh, it is one of the most important things that as I've been walking, people have been asking, how do I know and who the candidates are and how can I know more about them? So thank you very much for hosting that. Um, so I am a 34 year resident of Newark. I'm a mother of two children who attended uh, the Newark schools. I am a 15 year community volunteer member I have 31 years of experience in public service with the County of San Mateo. 15 of those years have been as the CFO for the District Attorney's Office with a $25 million budget. Eight of those years have been with CF as the CFO of the Human Services Agency with an oversight of $327 million budget. Currently, I am the Assistant uh, Agency Director with oversight of all fiscal and administration with an agency of over 800 employees. I have a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration Finance with a minor in HR from Cal State Hayward. I also am FEMA certified on emergency response. 
I've been activated during both the COVID health emergency and the Pescadero fire emergency as the chief of care and shelter. I believe that my experience and background make me well prepared to meet the challenges of city council and it would be an asset to the city of Newark. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to the second question and the first respondent will be Hasita. And the question is, what specifically would you do as a council member to retain local businesses and attract new ones? So first of all, I would start by building a supportive, strong business association to ensure that the voices are heard and that the city is working collaboratively to resolve existing challenges. I would look to see what developments, uh, what opportunities to develop zones there are by revitalizing, as an example, revitalizing our historic town along, with, along the Thornton Corridor that would require perhaps redirecting traffic to close some of the streets to increase the parklets. I would be looking to bring in music and other activities for families to come through. I would look to expand the high-speed internet that is already being planned by the city to attract and retain tech-driven industries. Because let's face it, what businesses need is foot traffic. And so that's what we need to focus as city council. How do we do that? We make sure that inspections are on time and supportive of business needs. We simplify licensing requirements. We conduct business-friendly information sessions with multi-city department involvement. involvement. For businesses that bring tax sales revenue, the city can share tax credits or rebates. We provide time-limited property tax relief with the business uh, while the businesses get up and running. And then we actively promote by local initiatives. Thank you. Uh, Terrence, same question. Uh, thank you. Um, existing businesses are challenged by um, perceptions of uh, safety issues. Homeless, homeless individuals that are um, that are in need of, of treatment, that are um, going to the businesses, creating problems, breaking into the businesses. This is causing uh, major difficulties for our businesses. So. Um, the, one of my top priorities is to address the, the safety concerns in the city of Newark, um, to address homelessness with compassion, to provide, to work, working with the county to address, um, to address um, treatment and, um, and mental health treatment and drug treatment, um, and, th and that will go a long way to helping our existing businesses. In addition, we, we need, we need to, to help our uh, Chamber of Commerce um, improve. And, and, and grow. City, city needs to be a partner with our Chamber of Commerce. Ch Ch Chamber of Commerce is having a hard time recovering from the pandemic years, and the city, the city council needs to set an example of partnership with the, with the Chamber of Commerce for our existing businesses. When it comes to attracting businesses, I, I have a long track record in that regard. Um, what the, the, the key, key way to do this, of, of course, working with city staff, um, is to take um, is to work with vacant spaces and to work with the real estate community to bring in to bring in really good quality businesses and of course in addition to to uh, working with staff to see that new development is um, uh, particularly around the new park mall is high quality. Okay, uh, Julie, the same question. Yes, when we think about our businesses. We really have to consider the fact that we really are the heart of the Tri-City area. And so instead of having our people, that's about 47,000 people from here, from Newark, traveling over freeways to get to an overly congested, long line location, waiting for hours just to get a hamburger, what we really need to do is to continue to promote shopping local. And one of the ways that we could promote shopping local is to do fundraisers within our community, is to promote within our community, and is to be part of our community. And what I mean is, for example, there was an opening of a local tea shop that happened about three weeks ago. They went on show social media. It ended up being that there were lines about two blocks long. And there were people that were attracted here from other surrounding communities 
people were willing to drive to be at the heart of the Tri-City area. So we have to continue to keep that momentum going. And a lot of it is by word of mouth, but it's also by grants, it's also by collaboration. And when I say collaboration, what I really mean is to go out into the community and let people know, why are you going all the way over there? We have perfect things here in Newark. Thank you. Um, we'll move on to our next question. And uh, Terrence, with this will go to you initially. And this is an audience-based uh, question. Newark has limited development space and no available land to annex. What is your vision for future development and how it relates to preserving Newark's small town atmosphere and traffic? Thank you for the question. The, um, indeed, Newark is, a, is an infill community. We don't have much um, land left for development. Um, I, I do believe that we need to protect our existing, uh, our remaining open space. We need to protect our wetlands and our, and our open space areas and focus development around already developed areas um, where, um, where there are infrastructures in place, um, in particular in areas um, near, near freeway and, and highway entrances to minimize the impact on existing neighborhoods. So it, it's very critical that we are strategic in our, um, in our planning um, for, for development. We do need development. We need housing for the region and we need housing for our own residents as they, as they form their own households. Um, and, we, and we particularly need to focus on affordable housing. However, we, we, we should and can protect our remaining open space and, um, and develop in areas that are already developed where infrastructure, particularly uh, traffic infrastructure, is in place. Uh, Julie, the same question to you. Yes, please repeat. Yes. New York has limited development space and no available land to annex. What is your vision for future development and how it relates to preserving New York's small town atmosphere and traffic? Yes. First, let's think about Old Town Newark. When we think about Old Town Newark, we should really think about the fact that the city was recently awarded $5.1 million from the third round of the One Area Grant Programs to be used to revitalizing the Old Town. And so what that means is we might be limited in our space, but that doesn't mean that we have to limit our minds. We could use the space that we have and revitalize what we need. So part of that is not only in looking at additional grants to fund us, but also to go out into our community and determine what lands are sacred to us, what lands are for our community. And so that may also require thinking about not building where we already have parks, not building where we have wetlands, which is also against the federal law. I know that some people are asking, let's go ahead, we could build more and more, but we cannot build on wetlands. We cannot build where we as a society have already determined that we do not want that. So instead, what we need to do is analyze the acres that we do have and determine what's there. And I can tell you, when I look at New Park Mall, there's a lot of open space. It's open space for retail that has not been used. And so what we need to do is determine how to use what we have and how to make sure that places are not vacant so that way we could attract people and tax money and funding towards Newark. Same question to Hasita. So I agree with Julie. We do have to take a look at what we have and how to use it. So for me, it would be important that we start reviewing existing vacant properties for possible rezoning, which would include some of our warehousing space that has remained vacant. We would also look to build a partnership with the county, Department of Housing, where Newark puts up the land, what few we have left, and they provide state and federal funding. I am aware of a program that could help us with that. So I would seek to partner with the Department of Housing. I would also look for opportunities to leverage city funds by seeking out state and federal funding opportunities such as grants. Um, thank you. Okay, we'll move on to our next question and this will go to Julie. 
Do you think the affordable housing needs of Newark are being met? If not, what role do you think the city of Newark should take to make housing more affordable for low-income residents? Yes. So when we really think about low income and affordability, we should also consider the fact that in 2022, Newark received a home key grant for about $38 million to convert 125 hotel suites into permanent, supportive, and affordable housing apartments known as Cedar Community Apartments. And so that was one way that we as a community determined that we needed to address low income and affordable housing. However, the battle is still ongoing. And what that means is we have to continue to not only attract individuals to come to Newark, but also to continue to provide a home for those individuals who live and work here. And they are tired of being renters, or perhaps they work here, and they're tired of commuting so far away from Stockton and further in order to just go to work. And I know that this is true because as a teacher here in Newark, I've spoken to other teachers as well, and they're taking trains just to come here. But they would be willing to live here if it was affordable. And that's why, as a Newark Planning Commissioner, I did vote in the affirmative when there was the idea of building units and affordable housing where people could also purchase some of the housing here on Thornton at a lower discount rate, then I was in favor of that. Okay, the uh, same question to Hasita. So to my understanding, the city has um, opted to actually use the tax transfer fund. So there's an opportunity there. You can either, when you have new development plans, you can either take a tax transfer fee and the developer can pay that or they can build affordable housing. Up until this point this year, the city has opted to receive the tax transfer in a fee and not in building affordable housing. And it is my understanding that next year that will change. So that I would, I would certainly support and make sure that that is happening because that is the only way that we're going to increase our affordable housing units for our residents. Now, some of the things I would also focus on is uh, I would favor multi-use developments with shops on the bottom and housing above. That allows us to uh, build as many housing units as possible. I would implement a first-time home buyers program to help some of our young families who are struggling today to purchase a home. I would also hire a dedicated person to develop and implement an affordable housing initiative for the city of New York. I believe by doing all of these things that we can meet the housing element plan that the city of New York has um, in place that requires us to build 1,874 homes by 2031. And about 10,031 units of those have to be for low income or moderate income. Thank you. And the same question to Terrence. Yes, um, housing affordability is a huge problem for Newark and for, for our whole region, um, and, and we need to do our part. Um, we need to be, um, I believe we need to, we should be focusing on ownership housing for, that is restricted to lower income, um, the lower income families. Um, and I, I believe there's an opportunity to work to partner with the school district to utilize um, um, unused school property to provide teacher housing which I think could be a, a, a very important um, element for our community. Many of our teachers are, are having to live some distance from our community and um, providing housing that was devoted to teachers and to certified staff would be very helpful. That obviously requires a partnership with the school district and careful planning. Um, we, we have an inclusionary housing ordinance in the city of Newark. We require a percentage of the housing units to be um, to be re restricted to affordable housing, we should make, make sure that our that our in lieu fee for that project is, uh, is up to date and actually provides us enough money to provide units. Um, uh, fees that are collected in that can be used as leverage to attract state um, state and, and federal funding. Um, so we need we need to have um, we need to make sure our fees are, are stay up to date. So we have enough money to attract 
on state and local funds. What we don't need is to turn hotels into housing in the middle of commercial areas. Okay, we'll move on to our next question. And uh, Terrence, you've um, provided a bit of a segue here. Okay. <laughs> so, um, and this question goes initially to Julie. And this is an audience-based question. What do you feel is the role of the city and its relationship with the school district? Yes. Well, as I've mentioned, I'm an educator here at Newark Unified School District. I'm also a union member and endorsed by Teamsters. I feel that it's very imperative that our community, including our city hall, individuals that work here as staff, as well as the mayor and city council, work collaboratively with the school district. And what I mean by that is to not only know the school board members by name, but also to be able to engage in things that promote education and that promote advancement of our youth here. And I am proud to say that I did also assist in volunteering at the last previous graduation, which was actually the first time that Newark Memorial High School was able to have many people come, including the mayors and the city council come, hand in hand with the school board. And I was almost shocked that some of them did not know each other's names, and it was the first time that they shook each other's hands. And so what we need to do from here is use that as a foundation to say, okay, we started our conversations, and now from here, let's continue to collaborate, continue to support each other, and to have those hard conversations about what we could do as a community to support each other, and especially to support the youth and our students here. Thank you. Um, the same question to Terrence. Um, the, the city has for decades done the, what, what essentially is the minimum to help the, to help the schools. Um, I believe we need to be thinking outside of the box about what we can do, not what we have to do. So I believe, this, I believe the city needs to sit in partnership with the school district, work together on achieving, the, the, um, achieving their goals um, and so that we can, we can really lift up our schools together as a community. We're one community. The boundaries of the school district and the boundaries of the city are, are the same. We need to be working much more closely together and supporting each other. The, um, um, so th those, are, those are the key elements for working with, with the school district. Um, and uh, we already have a liaison committee and that's a good start, but we, we, need, to, we need to be working much more carefully to, to help the city um, to help the city and the school district move closely together. For example, there is, as part of uh, the um, Sanctuary Village project, there's a, a parcel of land that's intended to go to the, to the, um, it's intended to go to the school district for to build a school. Well, there are no place to build a school right now. The city needs to be pressuring that developer to provide an extension to develop that property. And that, that can be accomplished with the, with the leadership on the city council. And uh, Jacinta, same question. So for me, this boils down to my understanding so far. And it's due to property tax and how that's allocated. There's a portion that goes to the schools and there's a portion that goes to the city. And so that is one of the reasons that has been cited in the past for keeping both separate. So um, keeping that in mind, one of the things that I've been thinking about it, that is, it, it would be key for the city to encourage uh, uh, developers to provide uh, funding to the schools. And perhaps not funding, but perhaps require them to make uh, repairs to facilities because they're in desperate need, um, or to bring in funding that would help, help with the parks, help with um, some of the land surrounding the schools that quite honestly, it looks awful. So if we were to ask our developers to provide some of that funding or some of those repairs, I think that would be a good collaborative way to help our schools. Thank you. All right, we'll come up with another question here. Um, and um, to Jacinta to begin with. 
There have been calls in cities throughout the United States to reallocate police funding towards social services that address problems such as mental illness, homelessness, and domestic violence. How would you address these issues? I would 100% agree with that. You know, a big slogan was used, defund the police. And I always opted to say, we can't defund the police. What we need to do is provide them with more funding to provide mental health services. Because while our police force is great, and they, especially in Newark, I mean, they come, you call them and they come out. You don't see that in many cities. So Newark should be really proud of their police department. Um, so for me, it's provide more funding to, prov to ensure that we have a mental health specialist within the department that can help support um, the police department when they are called out on these particular calls that involve mental health. And let's face it, that's what a lot of the police departments are facing today. So that is where I would say, no, we can't defund the police. We need to fund them more so that they can provide those kind of services to de-escalate. And not only that, but we need to retrain our police department on de-escalation techniques. And again, I would just give a big shout out to our Chief Arguello, who has done an excellent job. I've looked at the crime statistics, and I know there is a perception that crime has increased in Newark. And while it has, it is so insignificant that I think we still need to give our police department a round of applause. Thank you. All right, the same question to Terrence. Sure. Um, Newark's police, police force is excellent. Um, they have a great culture of community policing. They and they 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 work very hard to train to train our, our officers so, so that they understand that they're serving the community. And they actually, in my, in my experience, uh, they they take great pleasure in in serving the community, being seen as serv uh, as public servants. And so the city council needs to needs to lead and. and and continue to strengthen that pos that position. Culture like that doesn't just happen. It's because of the decades of of good work by uh, police management and the officers themselves and and previous city councils. So the the city council needs to maintain needs to maintain that. Likewise, council leadership needs to be needs to be applied to, across the county to encourage so that that. Hardened criminals, criminals that are victimizing our citizens, are actually prosecuted, and that services that that individuals need, um, services like mental health services and drug abuse services, are um, are provided to the locations. I, I don't I don't agree that this, the that our police department should become the provider of those services, but I believe the city council in lead in leading these efforts, when working with other cities, can provide. Um, can can provide leadership to make sure that those services are in our community. Julie, your question or your answer? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes, I do believe that we need to continue to support our Newark Police Department. Specifically, when we think about our police department, we have to consider the fact that they are our first responders, and one of the ways that we could help them help us is through continually helping to collaborate with them, but also to promote them throughout our youth as well. For example, on my own walk alone, I've helped convince two of the kids who told me they want to be police officers, but they said they were looking into going to Fremont to do so. And I said, no, let's think about this. And so I spoke to one of the captains while I was at the Rotary meeting, and she assured me, bring them on over to us because we could use Explorers and we could use our youth. And so that's what I did and they did start the Explorers program. And so when we think about defunding things or reallocating funds, we really need to work together with the police department to determine what are the majority of our calls for. Do the calls really work with mental health? And often, especially when it comes to our homeless population, they do need wraparound services. And so part of that is working within our county. And so it's not just looking at the city for funds, but also looking outside of our city, looking to our county, looking to our state to determine what funds are available so that we can assist, assist our population with mental health. And so that is what I'm a proponent of. 
Thank you. Um, I'm going to um, use another audience question, but let me ask the audience uh, at this point if you have questions that you have already composed on the 3 by 5 card, if you could hand them to one of our, oh, hand them to Angelina, and, um, and we'll see if we can work them into the mix. But I will ask you this, and this uh, first, uh, the first respondent will be Terrence. What will you do to add to the quality of community of our town? such as what will you do with parks and maintenance and homeless programs? Great, well, I've, I've touched on some of those um, issues already, but um, we, we definitely need to build our community um, and continue to strengthen it. Like, just like with the culture of our police force, we, um, the, 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 the great feeling of the community that we have in Newark doesn't just didn't just happen it, it was built and we need to keep we need to keep honoring it and building it um, we need uh, we need to continue with community community organizations like um, like neighborhood neighborhood watch programs we need to we need to continue to strengthen um, love Newark or love Tri City sorry um, and um, and we need to strengthen we need to strengthen uh, our service clubs. Continue our, our, our strength, strengthen our service clubs. Our um, our community spirit comes from volunteers, as uh, Mayor, former Mayor Smith used to say. We have rampant volunteerism here in, in Newark, and we need to. The city needs to play a role, and does, but could could, could uh, would appreciate council leadership as well. Take play a role in 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 building and and honoring and supporting that rampant volunteerism. Thank you. And um, now, uh, Julie, could you answer that question? Yes. Regarding parks, we need to consider accessibility. And so it's wonderful that we have so many parks. Unfortunately, sometimes the kids just aren't able to play because they don't have equipment to play there. And so one of the things that I do support that just started over this summer is the mobile park. And the mobile park is actually a van of equipment that is taken, taken around, around in Newark and it is going to different local parks and they actually do help initiate games and facilitate activities for students and youth in our community. And so that, that helps accessibility. Additionally, when we think about maintenance, we think about our roads, and our roads is funded from things like the gas tax. Sometimes that's not enough, and so therefore we have to take from general funds. And when that occurs, then we have to ask ourselves, how much can we take, how much is in reserves? And what we do know is on June 30th, 2023, there was a reserve for Newark that totaled at that time $22.2 million, which was 33.6% of the final general fund operating and debt services expenditures. And so we have to continue to maintain what we do have and keep it pristine for Newark. Regarding our homeless population, we have to work with the county. Thank you. And uh, Hasita, can you address that question? Sure. So one of the biggest issues that has come up while I've been canvassing neighborhoods, and if I haven't made it out to your neighborhood, hold on, because I'm coming. Um, so one of the two things that they keep addressing with me is street repairs and parks. They really want to see those done, and they want to see them done quickly. They're frustrated. They understand, I keep explaining, that the city has a plan to repair all streets, but they're frustrated because it's not going fast enough. And it's not going fast enough because there isn't enough funding. We get funding for that with our gas tax. Now, what's great, and here's a, a plug for Measure um, LL, what's great is that measure will help with this. It's going to provide some of the funding that perhaps we can expedite getting some of these repairs done quickly. So please vote for Measure LL. Now, for our parks, I gotta tell you, one of the best things that would really help the neighborhood to improve our quality of life, in my opinion, would be to create a path from the city to Don Edwards where you could walk or you could take your bike. 
I would love to see that happen, and I would be very much in support of figuring out if the city can't afford it, maybe we need to take a look at, at some of our big companies as our partners to help bring in some funding from them, just like Facebook did. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to uh, the next question, and um, Julie, you will come first on this. Newark may be susceptible to sea level rise and flooding in the coming years. A particular concern is further development on, along the Newark shoreline. How should the City Council address these current and future concerns? Yes. And so when we think about our environment and we think about our wetlands, we also have to think about our own future and the future of Newark. And wetlands are protected lands. Also, we have Don Edwards that's right near us, although it is technically Fremont, that's also protected land. And so it has come up in conversations as I've been canvassing. Our neighbors are asking, would you be in favor of protecting even more land for Don Edwards and protected wetlands? And so I can't prejudice myself on the matter. I can't make a decision without knowing more information so that way it's not impartial, but I will tell you that I do support our environment and I do support the idea of more federal programs and more federal protection for our wetlands. And so I'm also in support of collaborating with additional cities. And so what that means is when we think about Newark, Newark, as I mentioned previously, we have about 47,000 residents. We have about 20,000 houses, and we're not the only location on the coast. And so what that means is we have to work hand in hand with the other cities that are coastline cities. And so this topic has also been broached even recently with the various mayors as well. And I'm in favor of working with other cities within our communities and within our area of all of California so that we could come to an agreement of what we could do collectively. Thank you. Um, Hasita, could you address that question? So to me, all development plans should be considered and they should be evaluated to determine if it fits the needs of our community. While I am fundamentally appro uh, opposed to building on the wetlands because of environmental concerns that I'm sensitive to, I also understand that there's a high level of um, need to build. We need housing. So quite honestly, it's a competing priority. And it's something that we need to listen to all community voices and then make a decision. We can't preemptively say, I'm against this, I'm against that. You have to listen to all the voices and make the right decisions for the city. Now, what would serve, in my opinion, what would serve New York the best when it comes to the wetlands is for the federal government to purchase the wetlands and expand Don Edwards Wildlife Refuge. To me, that would solve the problem. But let's say that doesn't happen. Then we need to work collaboratively with all of the Tri-Cities and even further, all those that are impacted by the coastline. Because everybody's got to put their small grain into the, for solving this problem. Thank you. And Terrence, the same question. Yes, um, sea level rise is obviously um, a global issue, um, and um, Newark is not can't really take it, can't really address it on its own. Um, sort of even even on a local issue of, of levees and dikes, it has to be done in coordination with the with the whole region, or it really doesn't make sense. So the 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 the, the city council needs to be working in partnership with regional agencies and with our neighboring cities, so we can come up with a plan to protect our protect our existing communities from um, from sea level rise. Um, in addition, any new development that occurs is, is already required to study its impact on uh, the impact of, of sea level rise on those locations. They're required to bring in enough fill to lift up the areas out of the flood zone. Um, and I, as a council member, I would certainly work to maintain that um, th that requirement, that we make sure that the development that is built is built in a way that does not um, does not put it at, put it at risk. But we have existing neighborhoods that could be in danger, and we have to work with our with our community partners, with our neighbors, 
to find a way to protect our community from, from sea, sea level as it rises. Of course, we also need a climate action plan to help to help and to join in with, um, and I know the city is beginning that process, but um, to, to work with our neighbors to um, to address address our reduction of our greenhouse gas emissions as a community and as a city. Okay, um, the next question uh, will first go to Julie. Are you in favor of ballot measure LL, which increases the hotel tax? If so. What are the best uses for the additional revenue? Thank you for the question. Regarding ballot measure LL, I am a proponent. I do realize that it does increase hotel tax from 10% to 14%. And that's for individuals who are staying at hotels. And so with that, we could anticipate about a $2 million per year amount in gains. And additionally, we can use funds towards helping our first responders and our two fire stations that are over 50 years old. These fire stations are the home of our heroes. And so we have to ask ourselves what we're doing to help those who come first to help us. And so that's why I am a proponent of Measure LL. I feel that it only assists and helps our community, and majority of the individuals that do stay in hotels are from outside locations, such as Palo Alto. Palo Alto's hotel tax is 15.5%. Newark's hotel tax is 10%. That's a difference of 5.5%. And so we're asking ourselves whether or not we're worth it, and I say that we are. Thank you. Um, Terrence, same question. Um, I do not support Measure LL. I don't believe that um, that raising raising taxes is the right 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 first solution of to fiscal issues. I think we we really need to study to see if there's a, if there's other alternatives. And in particular, I'm concerned about Measure LL making it harder to attract hotel development into our community. Hotel, hotel occupancy tax is a big part of our revenue picture, and I, I'm concerned that uh, Measure LL would be, would be a, dampener, a dampener on, um, on hotel construction in our community. Um, even though our, our rates may be lower than Palo Alto's, they are, they are higher than surrounding cities, and it would put us at a competitive disadvantage. And Hosita. So I'm one of those people that hates to think about increasing taxes, but I'm very much in favor of Measure LL. And the reason why I'm in favor is while we may not be, uh, we may not, the 4% tax increase will put us probably higher than Fremont and Union City. We don't compare to that. We're actually part of the Silicon Valley. We're right across from Facebook. Google's nearby. A better comparison is those cities that are on the peninsula because that's where they're going to go stay. They're either going to stay there or they're going to stay, guess where, close to, which makes it that Newark. So for me, I'm very much in favor of, bring, of increasing the tax from the 10% to the 14%. Uh, what will it be used for? In my opinion, it's for the, the firehouses. They do need to be repaired. Um, I also think that they could be used for maintenance on local services and facilities. And as I said, speed up the repairs on streets that so many of our citizens are asking for. Um, they could be used to repair the potholes. That's also another issue that keeps coming up because some neighborhoods are experiencing flooding during the heavy rains. So we need to increase our services there. Uh, and then we need to maintain our neighborhood police patrols. Those, this measure L, that could bring the funding for that. So I'm very much in favor, and I hope all of you out there will be too. Thank you. Uh, we have time for one more question. I have one from the audience um, that will go first to Jacinta. And the question is, what is your opinion of the state's intervention in local land use issues? 
my opinion is if they want to continue to have to to be involved in those decision making then they need to provide the funding honestly um, I think that um, Whenever the state is asking for any type of changes, the first thing that everyone needs to ask, who's funding it? And that's something that I had to deal with a lot with the county. They would come up with these things where they wanted us to implement, and there's no funding. So the cities are then having to uh, figure out where, these where they're going to get the resources for this. So that's one of the things that I would help with, is to have those conversations with the state to say, that's great, where's the funding coming from? Thank you. Uh, Terrence, the same question. Uh, yes, uh, could you repeat it? Yes. What is your opinion of the state's intervention in local land use issues? Yes, yeah, so I have almost 35 years experience in, in land use planning and I've seen one, one um, poorly planned state piece of legislation roll over us after another. Um, it, um, it, the state level is not the place to address housing. Local control should be the, the primary concern. Um, the, I, I understand if the state is concerned about actual uh, impediments that have been put in place by some cities to prevent housing, but the, but the, 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 the sledgehammer that they're trying to, to use to kill a fly is inappropriate for, for what we're doing uh, and what, what's happening in our communities. Local control should be should be in place, and as Jacinta indicated, if, if the state wants to see change in this area, the state needs to put their money where their mouth is and and provide funding to make it happen. I know from in the past and um, and and our, in our history that if there's funding available, we will make the improvements. We will provide housing for our community. We don't need a mandate from the state to do it. We just need the help. And Julie? Yes. Well, my opinion of the state's intervention in local land use issues is that it's overreaching. And the reason why I state this is because as a planning commissioner, I was recently here for a meeting and there was an individual who was here from actually a different county. And he said he's an attorney. He's an attorney and as an attorney, he wanted to oppose an additional building of fixing our local McDonald's. And so then the question came, where are you from? Have you been here? Do you realize that our McDonald's hasn't been renovated since maybe the 70s? And he said, no, I've actually never driven here and I haven't seen it, you know? So it's like, no, actually I don't know. Because when I ask myself, what does the state have to do with local government? The state is in Sacramento. They're making decisions in Sacramento. And of course, as a city, we will comply with state rules. I know one of the state rules or initiatives was to provide additional housing and to make it easier to make ADU units. And so that's one of the ways that the state decided to intervene. Another way, though, was affordable housing and to ensure that all the cities are in compliance. And so when it comes to compliance issues, then we have to make sure that we are aligned with the state. <laughs> Otherwise, we will face difficulties and penalties. And so we have to be open-minded with that as well. Thank you. So we've uh, come to each candidate's closing statement. It's uh, two minutes, or up to two minutes. And uh, we will start with Terrence. Great. Um, thank you. Um, first of all, I want to thank the League of Women Voters for putting on this um, this event. It's um, very it's very important that we that this this community has this opportunity to hear from candidates and and I for one, um, as a citizen, appreciate all the work you do in our community. Um, so Newark is a is a vibrant and diverse community with incredible potential. We also face challenges that require thoughtful leadership, collaboration, and action. By working together, we can make Newark better, safer, more vibrant, more fair, and more sustainable. I'm committed to listening to the concerns of voters, fostering transparent governance, and working with community stakeholders to create opportunities for all. Whether it's addressing crime, supporting local businesses, or ensuring that all voices are heard, my goal is to represent 
uh, New York citizens with integrity and vision. Um, um, I'm running for city council because I believe in a future where we prioritize inclusivity, education, economic vibrancy, and, and sustainability. I'm a leader with a vision, and I have the experience that, I have the experience that Newark needs. To the, to the voters that are here and watching, I want to thank you for paying, t paying attention to this forum, and, um, and I, I appreciate your interest in our, in our community. Thank you, and Julie, uh, your two-minute closing statement. I plan to preserve and maintain our small time and small town character, the nature and beauty of Newark. I believe that our best approach to protecting our city is balanced and managed planning and growth. My experience as a Newark educator and being a board of director with PTA and volunteering has been extremely rewarding. I have a Juris Doctorate degree, a Master's of Science degree, and a Bachelor's degree. On City Council, I plan to bring my passion of doing all that it takes to get the job done. I'm deeply rooted in public service to our local community, which is why I earned the President's Gold Service Award in 2023. I would like to personally express my deep gratitude to all my supporters to help build this campaign. I'm trying to make it easy for you to vote Julie Del Catancho for New York City Council. It's true I have education and communication, but above all, I've ingrained in me the same dedication that my grandfather had when he enlisted in the military. And like him, I'm the type of person that will sign up and do something to fight for you. Even if we have a different point of view, because I never compromise liberty, or all our liberty is compromised. Let's make Newark a place where ordinary people like us can collaborate and make an extraordinary city. Julie Del Catancho for Newark City Council. Thank you. Well, Hasita, it's up to you to bring us home. <laughs> all right, here we go. First of all, again, I wanna thank the League of Women Voters for giving us this opportunity, and more importantly, giving the residents this opportunity to get to know us better. I also want to thank everybody in the audience, and I want to thank everybody that's watching online. Um, you will soon have to make a choice on who should fill the three vacant seats in City Council. I humbly ask that you consider me as your choice, based on the experience and knowledge that I would bring to this position. I bring knowledge and experience in navigating not just the county that I work with, but state and federal funding, all of their operations as well. And I would work hard to build strong partnerships and ensure that Newark receives its fair and equitable share of resources. As a member of the Emergencies Operations Team for the County of San Mateo County, I dealt with both natural and health emergencies and I am prepared to support our city with my FEMA certification. My background in finance and administration will allow me to hit the ground running. With so many open seats, it will be especially important to have a seasoned and experienced professional like myself. I also bring program experience. I have homelessness that I oversee for the County of San Mateo. I have child support. I have family, children and family services, which includes child protective services, adoptions, and foster care. I also oversee eligibility for Medi-Cal and CapFresh, which is food stamps. And I am also, uh, I have also experience in public safety. I worked 15 years with the district attorney in San Mateo County, and that provided me a deep ingrained love for our public uh, for uh, public safety employees, both in police, in, in, in uh, prosecution, and in fire. I thank you again, and that I hope that I have earned your vote tonight. It would be my honor to serve as your city council member. Thank you. So on behalf of the League of Women Voters, I want to thank each candidate tonight for your participation and especially for your willingness to run for public office and serve your community. 
We want to be sure that all voters know about the League's voters information website, vote411.org, vote411.org. This is an award-winning voting election resource that provides reliable nonpartisan information, information in both English and Spanish, including candidates' guides, voter registration and verification, details about your unique ballot, ballot and how to vote in your state. In 2020, more than 6 million people came to vote for 11 for election information on over 22,000 nationwide races. And thank you to our audience for watching this forum. And please, remind your family and friends to vote no later than November 5th. Good night. Thank you.